In today's video, we're going to be talking about uh, diode mixers, like this ADE-1ASK mixer from Mini Circuits. Uh, when selecting a mixer for your application, uh, there are a couple of obvious considerations. You know, one is it operate over the frequency range that you need, and two is it packaged the way that you need it to use in your application. Uh, beyond some of those obvious considerations, uh, probably the next most important consideration is the drive level or LO local oscillator drive level for the mixer and usually in mixer specifications this is just called the level of the mixer and you'll see that there are mixers that are level 7 mixers or level 10 mixers or level 17 mixers and what they refer to is the drive level for the local oscillator uh, input frequency uh, a level 7 mixer means that the, er, that the mixer requires plus 7 dBm drive level into um, the local oscillator port. You know, level 10 means it's 10 dBm, level 17 means it's 17 dBm, etc. And this is important because this really sets the response of the mixer. Now, setting the local oscillator drive power correctly will ensure that the diodes in the mixer are getting fully commutated. And by doing that, you ensure that you minimize the conversion loss from the RF input port to the IF or converted output frequency port. Now, a subtle thing that's interesting to note is that when we talk about, say, a level 7 mixer like this one, that refers to the amount of drive power plus 7 dBm as measured into a 50 ohm load. But the, uh, a mixer's uh, input is not going to be a perfect 50 ohm load. It may have an SWR of about 2.5 to 1. So if you actually measure the drive power at the mixer input, you're probably not going to see what you'd expect especially if you set up the RF drive power into a 50 ohm load. Nevertheless, the specs refer to the drive power as going into a 50 ohm load, kind of regardless of what happens to it when you connect up to the mixer input. Let's take a uh, quick look at that. Okay, I'm going to disconnect the LO drive from this mixer, and we'll move it over and set it up onto the spectrum analyzer input. Okay, so with the LO connected to the input here, you can see my local oscillator is at 100 megahertz. And you can see it's at uh, plus 6.96. That's pretty darn close to plus 7 dBm. Let me reconnect it up to the mixer, and we'll take a look at it in the time domain with the scope. All right, let's turn on scope channel 1 here and uh, bring my probe over. Got a nice short ground lead on here. And let's measure that, uh, that signal level. If we take a look at it, it doesn't really look sinusoidal. And now that's to be expected because the load presented by a diode mixer is nonlinear. So as you commutate the diodes, the impedance changes, and that's going to change the waveform. So that's to be expected. Now if we look at the RMS value and the measurement over here on the scope, it's showing about 305 millivolts. Now a plus 7 dBm signal would normally be about 500 millivolts RMS into 50 ohms. So we're not seeing what you'd expect. Uh, but this is really what happens. So when you're considering the LO drive power uh, for a mixer, uh, you would measure it um, with a 50 ohm load and expect that it will be something a little bit different <laughs> when you look at it uh, you know, with a scope maybe inside your circuit. Uh, so if you're really kind of unsure about how much LO drive power you need, you might want to play with adjusting that and taking a look at conversion loss as a metric to see whether or not you've got adequate drive power for the mixer. Okay, so let's take a look at the insertion loss with respect to the LO drive power. Uh, so there's my LO signal as coming out of the IF port. Remember, we're putting plus 7 dBm in, and I'm getting about minus 34 dBm out. So I've got a little bit more than 40 dB of loss from the LO port to the IF output port, and that's right in line with the specs for this mixer. I'm also putting in an RF, an RF signal. Uh, at uh, minus 100, or excuse me, at 110 megahertz, that's this signal here, and that's going to be uh, kind of attenuated greatly here too. Uh, I'm putting minus 30 dBm input to the RF port, and I'm seeing something more like you know minus 55 or so here uh, coming out of the IF port, and that's again pretty typical. So the converted signal is going to be the difference of those. And that's the one we're really interested in. That's this signal here at 10 megahertz. Now we can see what the insertion loss is because I know that I'm driving the RF port with minus 30 dBm and I'm getting about minus 35.3. So that means that I've got about 5.3 dB of conversion loss in this mixer. and That's about what it's supposed to be. Now if I reach up to my LO signal generator here and let me start reducing the power. So I reduce the power. I can see that coming down and I can also see 
the power coming down on my uh, IF output. So I'm increasing the amount of insertion loss or conversion loss that I have in the mixer. So let me, let me bring my LO drive back up again. And I see as the LO drive is coming up, my conversion loss is getting less and less. And I'll reach a point where as I keep popping this up, my conversion loss kind of levels out. If I go way up high in my RF power, my conversion loss is really, it's kind of stuck there. So I'm at minus 35.2. If I come back down, it's still staying pretty steady. And then I'll reach a point where it starts coming back down again. See how it's coming back down? It's because I don't have enough LO drive power. I'm sitting at about 0 dBm drive power now. And if I bring it up till, uh, keep bringing this back up again until this goes steady. Okay, that's right about there. That's plus 7 dBm. Anything higher than that, I'm fully commutating the diodes and my conversion loss is now holding steady at, at about 5.2, 5.3 dB. So this is how, if you don't have a spec on a mixer or if you've home brewed your own you know, diode ring mixer like this one, the way to kind of decide how much drive power you really need is to vary the amount of uh, LO power coming in and look at the IF output. And when the IF output no longer raises up anymore as you bring the LO drive power up, then you know you've reached the required drive power for that diode ring mixer. So another uh, rule of thumb uh, to think about is, uh, is how much RF power can I put into a diode ring mixer? And that's also related to the yellow drive power. A good rule of thumb is that you want your RF power to be probably 10 dB lower than the yellow drive power. If you make it any higher than that, then you start uh, running the risk of getting some distortion because the RF will start commutating or affecting the commutating of the diodes. Now one measure of that is the 1 dB compression point. And the 1 dB compression point is where, uh, as you go up in RF power, uh, the IF output, or the converted output, will track that one for one. You know, there'll be the loss there, in this case about 5.3 dB. But as you go up higher in power, now eventually the RF output, or the IF output, uh, will, won't go up as much as the increase of the RF input power. Once, you, once that deviates by more than a dB, for example, the um, the uh, conversion loss goes from 5.3 to say 6.3 dB, that's the 1 dB compression point. And that's going to occur a couple of dB below the LO drive power typically. So you want to be well below that so you don't get into that area of distortion. Because uh, 1 dB compression point is just one measure of distortion. Other measures are like the third order intercept and things like that. And, and all of those will be related to the input power with respect to the LO drive power. If you've got a, a, an application where you need a higher RF input into the mixer, then you're going to have to go with a mixer that's either an active mixer or if it's a diode mixer, something with a, a higher level, like a plus 10, a plus 17, a plus 13, or whatever is necessary to get that LO drive power high enough to prevent distortion issues from your RF input to the IF output. Right, so I hope this video has given you a little bit of insight as, as to what's meant by the level of a diode mixer, like a level 7, level 10, etc. And what that affects when it comes to the mixer's performance. Uh, any questions, of course, uh, please post them below. If you like the video, give me a thumbs up. And if you haven't subscribed already, please do so and uh, tell your friends. And thanks again for watching and we'll see you next time.